everyone, Jen Cherkis here, and I am here to tell you that you can be a watercolor artist. I'm going to share with you how you're going to achieve that and how simple and fun it really, really can be, creating these two holiday cards. I have to apologize, I am getting over a little bit of winter crud, so if my voice seems a little off or uh, a bit different, it's just because of that. All right, so today I am going to be featuring the new Honeybee Stamps Winter Water Watercolor Stamp Set. This is a solid stamp set, and any solid stamp set will work for this technique. I'm also going to be using Peace, Love, and Joy Sentiment Set, and then I also am going to be using Heart, Be Light Sentiments. They all have coordinating dies, which makes life so much easier. I'm going to start with a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock. This is my most favorite watercolor cardstock and the only watercolor cardstock I use. I'm using the smooth side of the watercolor cardstock, and I'm going to start with the poinsettias as part of this set. I'm using Distress Watercolor Pencils today. These are a woodless watercolor pencil, meaning they're not encased in wood. They're also very highly pigmented. And so I'm starting by just dipping it into a cup of water to soften the watercolor pencil and get some of that pigment easier to rub off onto these stamps. You will see I'm using the edge of my watercolor pencil. I just find that it lays down a lot more pigment and kind of goes a little bit faster. I'm starting with Candied Apple, the Distress Watercolor Pencil. What's also nice about Distress Watercolor Pencils is if you're familiar with the Distress Palette, if you've been using the ink pads, the oxides, the paints, any of the products that are in the Distress line, then it's just nice and easy knowing what colors you kind of want to grab to and play with. At this time, there aren't a watercolor pencil for every Distress color that's out there. I'm hoping more will be released soon, but the three sets that are available give an amazing variety of colors. So now I'm going to use a little bit of pink and some picked raspberry, and I'm adding this to the center of the poinsettias. I personally like a pinkier red. Um, if you follow me at all, you know I actually don't really love red. Uh, don't hate me. Uh, but So I'm adding a little pink to this just to kind of pinken up my red a bit. So the first impression is going to look pretty bold, um, kind of like a kindergartner created it, which there's nothing wrong with that. But don't be discouraged, okay? You're going to actually see that I am going to use these impressions later, and I'm going to give you some tips on how to modify them a bit. But now I'm taking another piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock. I'm using the Distress Sprayer from very high up. I'm misting my stamps with a little bit of water. The Distress Sprayer is great because it does do a fine mist of water or it will do water droplets if you toggle the sprayer. So, but the other key is I'm doing it from very, very far up. Now I'm just using the water to clean my stamps. So I sprayed the water onto the stamps and now I'm using a flour sack cloth just to take that extra pigment off. Because I want to stamp a, um, I actually want to add some other colors to my flowers. So I'm going to be using the Fossilized Amber Distress Watercolor Pencil. This is a nice uh, warm toned yellow. And I want to add some yellow to the centers of my flowers. So you can see I dipped my watercolor pencil into the cup of water to soften it, and I am um, using the edge of the pencil to add or to lay that pigment down on the stamp. If the pigment's not laying down, you can see kind of like with this pink pencil here, I'm just adding more water and then 
rolling it around on the stamp. So again, on the second impression of the uh, poinsettias, I didn't feel like there was a lot of pink in here. So I'm adding some more. You can see having a stamping platform for this technique so that you're able to keep realigning your stamps makes it really, really nice. Now this bottom one didn't seem to transfer much at all, so I added a little bit of water. And then you can see I'm just gently pressing. You don't need to press hard, um, but I'm just gently pressing to transfer that ink. Then we have some pools of pigment on these flowers. I actually love this and I often will let these dry, uh, dry naturally. For the sake of this video, I am heat setting this just a little bit and I decided I'm gonna add some water droplets to move some of this pigment around. So this is what I was mentioning before with the Distress Sprayer. You can get a nice fine mist, or if you toggle the nozzle, you will also get uh, these really yummy water droplets, which are gonna react with the Distress Watercolor Pencils. So I'm just adding some heat to this to get things to, uh, dry a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and follow the same process again to stamp one more of these poinsettias. So I'm just lining it up here on my Distress Watercolor cardstock that I previously stamped on and again I'm going to follow those same steps. So I'm going to dip my watercolor pencil into the water this time I'm trying with um, the lighter colors first. So I'm gonna add the yellow, and then I'm gonna add the pink. And it's all about playing and experimenting. So last time I kind of layered these colors after the fact. Now I'm gonna kind of add all three at the beginning. And it's fun to get a variety of looks, especially when we start to build our project. Um, but it's also just a fun way to have some creative play and really see how these images are going to turn out. So again, laying the pencil down on its side, dipping it in the water if it's not laying enough pigment down, and then giving it a gentle press onto the Distress Watercolor cardstock. Again, all that yummy pooling of the pigment is really, really beautiful. And you will see once things start to dry. Um, and then later in the video when I share some tips. So you can see here all my pigment is kind of in one area. So I'm adding some water and kind of uh, tipping my stamping platform to get that pigment to move around a bit. And you can see once I gently press down onto the watercolor cardstock, it's definitely filling in that space and moving about really nicely. Again, I'm kind of manipulating the pool of pigment that's on my paper. We can do that, by the way, as artists. These are our projects. So feel free to manipulate and kind of move things around if you want to see happen. It's not going to run out of the edges. Um, there's kind of an invisible wall that's been built up. And now you're actually seeing I'm using just a wet paintbrush and I'm just kind of moving some of that pigment around into the shape of the flower. And that's totally okay as well. What's nice about having the stamps is it allows us the shape of the flower, especially if you aren't really skilled at drawing, which I am not. And so having that shape gives us that creative freedom where we don't have to really think about that process so much. Uh, we can just play more with the colors and the textures and the looks that we want to achieve. 
So now I'm working with the other stamps in the set and I'm kind of having a little bit of creative license here. I decided I wanted a little bit of pop of teal on my cards. Uh, so I'm using Salvage Patina Distress Watercolor Pencil right now and I'm go ahead and stamping these pretty little sprigs that were included in the stamp set. And I'm always getting that second generation stamp. So here I spritzed a little bit of water and I'm stamping it again to see what impression I get. Salvage Patina is a very light color in general. So that second impression wasn't as bold as I wanted it to be. So I'm adding some more pigment from my pencil um, onto the stamp to go ahead and I will stamp it again. Again, you can keep building up your layers. You can do as little or as much as you would like. I find with the lighter colors, you do need to add a little bit more. I can kind of see where on my impression is lacking. So that's kind of where I just added a teeny bit more of the pencil and I'm stamping it one more time. And I just love, love, love how that looks. My stamps clean up very, very easily. Again, spraying them with water and using a flour sackcloth to clean in between uh, colors or as I switch stamps. So for the next set of greenery in this stamp set, I'm using some crushed olive uh, Distress Watercolor Pencil. I'm coating the whole part of this stamp and I want to add a little variety to the color. So now I'm using the peeled paint Distress Watercolor Pencil and I'm just kind of mixing this in. You won't harm your pencils by mixing the colors like this. I actually just leave my pencils kind of messy and I get some happy mistakes down the road when different colors appear. But you can always dip your pencil back in the water to clean off any of the other colors that are on your pencils. So here you can see I started by just misting my stamp to stamp that second generation just to kind of see what happens. And now I'm adding a little bit of peeled paint, Distress Watercolor Pencil, to the stamps. And now I'm adding a little bit of crushed olive to fill in some areas, give it a fine mist, and then I am stamping it. When I decide to use a fine mist of water or when I choose not to use a fine mist of water, it all depends on how wet my stamps look. So if they look very wet and puddly before misting with water, I usually choose to skip the water. I can always add water after because I'm using a stamping platform. I can stamp it multiple times. But if it's very watery and I add water, it's just going to kind of become a little bit of a puddly mess. And you can't really take that away too, too much. So now for this last bit of greenery, I am using the Rustic Wilderness uh, Distress Watercolor Pencil and I'm coating the whole bit of these pine sprigs. And then again, to add just a bit of variation to the pine needles, I'm adding a little bit of uh, Walnut Stain Distress Watercolor Pencils. And you can see I'm just kind of, I don't put too much thought into where I'm slapping it down. Once I go and stamp it, things are going to squish around anyways. Uh, so don't, don't feel like you have to put a lot of thought in where you're adding your colors or your second colors. Um, it's all going to work out. You'll see. Trust me. Trust the process. All right. So now I'm doing my second generation. I'm adding, I can see there's not much pigment left. So I am adding some more pencil. If your stamp is a little bit more detailed, like these pine uh, boughs are, it's not going to hold on to as much pigment for that second generation. And again, this is all just creative learning and practicing and seeing how things look, you'll get a feel for what works the best. And now we're going to do the little berries, which are also included in this winter watercolor stamp set. So I'm doing a little bit of candied apple and I'm going to touch on a little bit of uh, seedless preserves. 
And these are going to kind of look a little bit like a pool, pooly mess. <laughs> um, a lot of pooled pigment, uh, but I'm going to work with them later. You'll kind of see what I'm going to do with them. So I'm going to continue to stamp with them. Um, you know, I might add a little bit of pigment, but I'm pretty much doing like second and third and fourth uh, generation stamping here. I'm not adding a lot of extra pigment. I'm not even really misting them. I'm just getting the shape of those berries down. Um, and, you know, working with it. You'll see. It's all going to turn out amazing can see here I didn't even add any water or any pigment and I got a nice impression. I'm doing a bunch because I'm not quite sure if my first ones that are very pooled in pigment are going to work with what I think I'm going to do. So I figure why not stamp a bunch more berries and if I use them great and if I don't no worries right. All right so now, what I'm doing to kind of jazz up these berries a little bit is I am dabbing on some fossilized amber in the centers of the berries with a uh, number four round paintbrush. It's not a fancy paintbrush, but I know some of you might want to know what size the paintbrush is that I'm using. And what I'm also going to do on some of these berries that are have all this pigment and they're kind of pooled together is I'm going to use my paintbrush um, in just a minute and you can see I'm cleaning it off and I'm actually using a clean paintbrush picking up the pigment and off camera I'm wiping my brush on my flower sackcloth. So I'm wiping that extra pigment away and this is giving me some space to add some of this yellow pencil. So I took some of that pigment away and now I'm able to go in and add a little bit of this fossilized amber to the centers of those berries. So again, with a clean paintbrush uh, with just a little bit of water, that's enough to activate that pigment, pull away the color. I'm wiping it on a flower sock cloth off camera and then that opened up some space for me to be able to dab some yellow and some fossilized amber. So now I've die cut all of my pieces with the coordinating dies. And now that they're die cut, I'm seeing some of the pooling that maybe I wanna manipulate a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just taking a wet paintbrush, just water is on this paintbrush. And I'm just moving some of the pigment left behind from the pencil around and kind of spreading it out a bit. Again, this paintbrush is just that number four round paintbrush that I use for most things in my studio. Um, and I'm just kind of checking these out and figuring out if I want to do any creative play here. And you can see here I am moving some of the pigment around. These are the ones that were stamped first, um, which had a lot of pooling of the pigment. They kind of looked like a blobby mess, but now that I'm giving it a little love, now that things have dried a bit, I can really see the potential and I can kind of clean them up a bit and make them have a little bit more texture and uh, show up a little bit more. These are, again, the first ones that I stamped, so that yellow didn't really show up. So I thought, hey, why not just add some yellow, right? You can always layer on more after the fact. So that's what I'm doing here with the fossilized amber uh, Distress watercolor pencil. That's what's really fun when you are playing with watercolors is just by adding water, you can kind of continue to move that color around. So you can see here, I'm kind of moving out some of this pooled pigment. I'm not filling in the whole flower completely. I wanna definitely leave some lights and some darks. So I'm cleaning my brush off and using a clean brush to kind of soften the edges between the next colors or the variation of colors. 
Now I'm stamping Peace, Love, Joy with some black ink that is watercolor friendly. I'm stamping it on the smooth side of the Distress watercolor pencil so I get a nice impression. I'm also stamping a couple sentiments from Heart Be Light. There were great smaller sentiments in the Peace, Love, Joy set, but I really liked a couple of these that were in the Heart Be Light, so I wanted to kind of mix and mingle them. I'm using Distress Watercolor Pencils to color in the letters um, from Love and Peace, and I'm purposely coloring them in. I don't want them to look super smooth and even. I want them to look splotchy and a bit like watercolors. Splotchy in a good way. I don't know if splotchy is really the best term to use, but hopefully you'll understand what I mean. I'm mixing a little bit of picked raspberry and candied apple on my paintbrush together um, just by dabbing that wet paintbrush on the tip of the pencil. And that way I'm getting that nice pinky red that I like to use. And again, I'm just filling in any of those open areas um, from the stamped image to just add a touch of color. For the word piece, I'm using salvaged patina and peacock feathers. So I'm putting down some salvaged patina first. And while the uh, letters are still pretty wet and there's kind of pooling of the pigment, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of peacock feathers and just get in some variation with some darks to go along with those lights. So you can kind of see how I'm going in there. I think this might have been a little bit easier if I did use a smaller paintbrush, which by the way, I have sitting in my cup right in front of me as I'm working. But I don't know if you work the same way as me, but you kind of get working. And even though in the back of your mind, you're like, it'd probably be easier if there was a smaller paintbrush but you don't want to stop what you're doing. So you just continue to struggle a little bit with the tool that you're using. I don't know why. I don't know why I do this to myself, but so you can see, I'm just adding a little bit of that peacock feathers uh, to give a little bit of variety and some different looks to the different parts of these letters. All right, so now I'm gonna use some Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and I just wanna add some white splatters to all the die cuts um, of the flowers and all of the greenery. So I just, um, I'm working right on my tabletop surface. It's a glass tabletop. I added a little bit of water to water it down, and I'm using that same number four round paintbrush to just add some splatters to all the things, all the things, because why not? <laughs> I just love how this looks. Um, you'll see throughout the rest of my video, my desk is going to be messy. I need to clean it off with some glass cleaner. I'll do that after I'm done filming. What I forgot to film is on the backgrounds of these cards that I'm trimming down to be four by five and a quarter, I splattered some of the red gold, um, paints from the Gonzai Tombi Starry watercolor palette. So I just wanted a little bit of gold splatter and I chose the red gold since there was a lot of red on these cards. I did it on the textured side of the Distress watercolor uh, card set just to give it again some more texture since these cards are going to have a lot of white to them. And I just added these background panels to some card bases with some foam, uh, foam tape. So now we are going to be florists. So, so far we've been watercolor artists and now we're going to be florists and we're going to arrange our little floral decor here. Um, I'm just kind of getting an idea before I start gluing things down of where I want things. I'm realizing I like, you know, the darker colors in the back and the salvage patina popping in the front and then okay I'm gonna put a smaller flower here and the sentiment is it gonna go low or is it gonna go high um, I'm just kind of figuring all of that out before I start gluing 
Now I'm gonna use my Honey Bee Stamps Precision Tip Glue, um, a nice wet glue. I'm adding some at the bottoms of the greenery and tucking it underneath the flowers. The flowers are not attached yet. I'm really just kind of using them for placement. And I'm purposely not attaching um, the whole greenery down with wet glue. I really didn't want the tops or the tips of the greenery to be glued flat down. Um, this way they are uh, allowing some of their own texture just by lifting up a bit and not being smacked down so much. All right, so now that I have a sense of where things are going to be, I'm going to finish adding the bottom greenery, mimicking pretty much, you know, what I did on the top. And then to add the flowers, I am going to use some foam squares. So I'm going to use some larger foam squares and go ahead and add that first large poinsettia to the card. This is gonna kind of cover up all those ends of the greenery that we already placed. And now we're gonna add the smaller flower. But I decided now that I've seen it die cut, it was kind of some awkward spots that didn't get filled in. So here I am just using a wet paintbrush and just kind of filling in these areas a little bit more um, to fill in that flower. I did heat set it off screen with my Ranger heat tool, and now I'm just adding foam squares on the right side of the flower, and I'm using wet adhesive on the left side of the flower since that is going to overlap the larger poinsettia. Anytime you're using a wet glue and you are using a stiffer cardstock especially like this distressed watercolor cardstock you just need to hold it in place for a minute just to give that wet glue time to set so i decided i am going to have this sentiment in the upper right hand corner so again some parts of it are going to overlap what is already popped up with foam squares and some parts of it are not so i'm just kind of figuring out where I'm going to need a foam square and where I can use a wet adhesive. I like how it tucks into the uh, arrangement in this upper right hand corner. I think it looks so pretty. And then have yourself a merry little Christmas. I'm just adhering flat with the wet adhesive. So now I'm gonna be tucking in some of these berries. And this was uh, even more so why not all of them needed to stamp out perfectly because I'm tucking them in, you're not even seeing all of them. But I'm adding three little bunches of the berries here and there in my floral arrangement. So now this second card is going to come together so quickly because I have an idea of where I want everything to be and uh, the layout has kind of been already determined. I'm just copying the first card. So again, I'm using that wet adhesive to tuck in the greenery in the back and then I'll be using foam squares to adhere the flowers in the front. In this case, I thought the sentiment looked really pretty in the lower right corner, kind of overlapping the flowers. So again, I'm doing some partial foam squares on the bottom of the letters, and then I'll add some wet glue to the tops of the letters where they're going to overlap the flowers. And then I will add some foam squares to the smaller parts of the sentiment.
Of course, a card would not be complete from me if I didn't glitter all of the things. And Distress Rock Candy is absolutely perfect, I feel, for anytime we want to glitter any of those things in nature. So in this case, the flowers. So I'm dabbing on some Distress Collage Medium. I squeezed it on with the bottle and then I just kind of patted it down with my finger to kind of spread it out and make it a little bit of a thinner coat and then I put the Distress Rock Candy all over where I had that Distress Collage Medium. Now I'm using a baby bottle of Glossy Accents and I'm adding a generous amount of Glossy Accents to each of the berries on this card. And I just love, love, love how this turned out. And last but not least, I'm adding a few Holiday Wishes gems to this card to just add a little bit more bling. That Distress um, Rock Candy is a subtle shimmer. And then these gems are just gonna add a nice little pop, pop of bling um, on this holiday card. I did the same thing on the second card as well, adding the Distress Rock Candy Glitter and some of the Holiday Wishes gems. Hope you can now see that you too can be a watercolor artist with tools such as some solid stamps and Distress Watercolor Pencils. It's amazing the look that you can achieve very simply. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thank you so much for joining me and happy holidays.